application of all of these things, right? So how can I set up my off-season program to reflect these things here? I want my guys to have powerful hands. I want to be I want them to be explosive, right? Um and I want powerful hips. Okay. Boom. All right, we're in here. All right, we're switching it up. All right, we're switching it up. Now I'm shifting um, into EJ's gym coaching mode for coaches, actual coaches, football coaches, right? This is what I do. EJ's gym is a guy to elevate your mindset for sports, for life, all right? So this is just something I'm passionate about. So this is part of my program. Um, to, to help mentor other coaches as well. Um, and this is my first real video about offensive line play. Um, and I'll have, um, you'll see different videos if you follow me of me training different linemen. And, and I just wanna let you into, you know, my mindset and how I go about, you know, as far as actually training them. I'm not gonna show you everything that I do, but I'll show you some. I'll give you bits and pieces. I don't go in depth um, as far as you see my workouts. So I can talk about you, about what I do in the thought process, but you still have to connect it on your own as a coach and apply. Application is big. And that's one thing I tell my, my kids that I train. I, I, can, I can develop um, or show you a million drills, but it's up to you to be able to apply those drills in the game. All right. First thing first. The offensive line, anybody will tell you this. This is so important. Is stance and start. The stance is so important. So important. And be mindful, right? And right now, I'm only coaching on a high school level right now. Um, but at the same time, I see a lot of things. And this is just the area that I'm in right now. Um, Raleigh, North Carolina, right? And I'm originally from Miami, Florida, and I'm and I'm, shoot, I'm telling you, I had some great coaches. Right now, from what I see, other guys and what they try to do with kids, I had some awesome coaches. So I'm thankful, and that's why I always give my coaches uh, shout outs. Like I said, Coach Ponce, Coach Martin, Coach Hodderberg, Coach D. Um, oh my God, it's, I can't even think. I had so many. Um, Great guys in front of me, Coach Waters, even though we coach on the, on the opposite side of the ball, I learned so much um, from you, Coach uh, Jamie Holland. I saw him the other day. I'm thankful for the experiences that you guys had that you put in me so I can turn around and put it into the kids. Um, so like I said, foundation, stance and start is very important. And as a coach, right, on a high school level, you will want to think about what type of scheme do you have, right? Because I've encountered guys who want to throw the ball but have linemen in a running stance. It's a difference, right? It's a big difference, right? If you want to throw the ball, have a guy moving backwards, your lineman going backwards, but all this weight is going forward, he will get beat every single time just because of his stance, right? So, the best stance to be in if you want to run and throw the ball is a balance. A balance stance is where alignment is basically, you can't really tell if it's run or pass block. So his hands in the dirt, but you can't tell whether he's going to go backwards or forward, but that's what you want. Right, you don't want to give give it away um, from watching the lineman, but at the same time, you want your guys to be able to get in front of the guy so you can have a play. So think about that when stance, because if they're in a stance that's too heavy, is they will not be able to get out the stance, and then you'll have problems, especially like for your tackles, um, catching guys on the on the rush end. Um, with that, with the kick slide or whatever, a drive catch or whatever terminology you want to use to kind of stay in front of the guy. 
but a balanced stance is the way to go. All right, not too, not too heavy on their hands, okay? So that's one thing. And another thing that's very important for me, like I mentioned before, after getting the guys used to their stance, I would tell them, I'll tell you, you know, if you strip your first starting camp, do this every day. Show them how to get in a proper stance the way you want, the stance that you like, and have them work reps over and over. What I do, I get I get the guys, and uh, maybe I'll film a video whenever I'm putting together a camp. I'll get somebody to film the video so you guys can see. Um, I'll get a row of kids. Maybe I'll go five each. Just say I have three rows. I have 15 kids, and I'll probably take like 10 10 steps. 10 yards, I'll stand 10 yards in front of them and I'll make them get in the stance and I'll hold my hand out and they have to tell me the number. All right, so this shows me that they're in a balanced stance and their head is up, right? Because you have to be able to see what's in front of you to, um, to know who you're blocking and to understand the blocking scheme. If the guys move around, I teach my guys football, so if guys move around, uh, assignments may change. All right, so a stance is very important. Make sure their head is up. Make sure they don't have too much weight on their hands. Make sure they can move to any side, whether you want to pull, whether you want to move back and kick, or whether you want to um, run block, that they can do it all out of one stance. Not adjusting their stance out of one stance, okay? Because you'll give it away if you do, do something else. Now, some people are that good, you can do that. In some high schools, you can get away with that in high schools, but as you progress and as your kids progress, they won't be able to. All right, <clears throat> start. First step, first step, first step, first step. What are we doing with first step? What are we doing with first step? Six inch step, every time, over and over, over and over, over and over. Base step, uh, angle step, zone step. Um, whatever steps that you take, do it every day. One, 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 two, 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 all right? So however you do it, one hands, one hands, one hands, two hands, two hands, two hands, whatever, however you, you, you want to set that up or whatever works best for you every day, especially in camp. After camp, you can kind of fall back and start working on other things because you're game planning and certain things like that. But over, 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 over. Drill them, drill them, drill them, drill them, drill them. And I learned that from um, Coach Martin, one of my coaches in high school, I mean college, um, about drilling. And he's still my mentor to this day. He said, you want your kids to know anything? Drill them, just keep doing it, over and over. And I don't mind, because I talk to my kids, but let's do more than we talk. You know, you have some guys that just, you know, <clears throat> explain stuff, or explain too little or explain too much. You gotta have a happy medium. You want the kid to understand why he's doing what he's doing, but you don't wanna take up all of the training time. You explain the drill, you explain the function of the drill, and then you get into it, right? So, over, over, one, two, one, two. Work the rhythm, work it, work it, work it. All right, so stance and start, all right? This is, this is important too, but um, power and agility. But this, um, for me, the next thing I would get into is of course power and, and agility. Like I said, it's very, very, very important. Not that up. All right, but I want to talk about progression. All right, as a coach. O-line, you work the progression. Everything is a progression. So you wanna work stance and start, and, and you work everything as a progression, whether it's pass or run. Break down each drill, right? To the smallest parts if you can. And like I said, I'll, I'll shoot some more videos and hopefully I can um, get into and show you guys how I go about with my progression, with my run progression, which is my favorite. I love um, run progression and then how I get into a uh, pass set and um, how I progress with that. All right. But important power, you put hands. 
feet. All right, super important. Power, hands, explosion. Power, hands, explosion. All right, you want to be able to explode and bring your hips. Hips are very important, right? So, as you get into this, right, these are the things that you want to emphasize in the off season. All right, so you want to create drills that create powerful hands, right? That help your guys be powerful at explosion, at, a, at the point of contact, right? When they explode, and you want your guys to have powerful hips. So you need to design, design something in the off season that caters to all of this feet. All right, you want your guys to be agile and to be able to stay in front of guys. It's not all about being the biggest, guy on the field or the strongest guy on the field because I played undersized so it's about this a combination of all of these things right so how can I set up my off-season program to reflect these things here I want my guys to have powerful hands I want to be I want them to be explosive right um, and I want powerful hips Right? I want my guys to be explosive. I want powerful hips and I want quick feet. Quick feet. Um, so, I'll, what I'll do after this video is, well, not after, because I have videos of me actually training kids. I'll put together a collage of videos with different things like this. Well, it might be on the tail end of this video um, about everything that I do and the things that I do in the off season to build this up. All right, Jim. All right, flip side. Now, pretty. Go. Good. Two more. Now, ready. Go. All right, last one. Ready. Give me two more. Ready, sit, go. Right. Ready, sit, go. All right, reload. All Hip. Ready? Go. Below. Ready. All right, base step, base step. Keep the shoulder square. Ready? Step, step, step. Ready? Ready? Opposite. Ready? Ready? Step, step, step. Ready? Last one. Ready? 